when we think of our national icon, that charismatic Kiwi, not many people would know that without the support of thousands of people, 95% of Kiwi chicks will not make it to their first six months of life. Thanks to places like Kiwi Encounter in Rotorua, along with BNZ's Operation Nest Egg, our Kiwi chicks have a far greater chance of survival. The males sit on the eggs, and unlike in other families where it's a female brooding. So we've got a transmitter on that male's leg. They're monitored with a big aerial. Doc staff go around and have a look at where the male is. When we know that he's sitting on an egg, we bring the egg in to us about 30 days through incubation. The incubation is about 78 days long. We finish the incubation, hatch them, and then feed them up so that they can go back out into the wild. And what's involved? So the egg arrives. Firstly, we then need to wash the egg to make sure that any bugs from outside don't bring in contamination to our facilities here. And then it's candled, which is a process where we put a light source, shine it through the egg, and then we can tell how old it is and whether it's fertile or not. We do all that, and if it's okay to go, it'll go through into the ink room and we'll um, keep it warm and incubate it in there. And how can you tell when it's ready to hatch? There are two main stages to hatching. The first stage is when the bill is poked through the air cell. So if you think about when you have a hard-boiled egg, if you tap it on the top and there's a bit of a space between that and the shell, that's the air cell. And when the bill is first pressed through into there, it starts breathing air through its lungs for the first time. Once it's internally pipped, that's what we call it, um, it then externally pips and that's where you see the cracking for the first time on the outside of the shell and then it will slowly hatch and it can take four to seven days to hatch so it's quite a long process. Just prior to hatching the, the yolk is external to their body and they absorb it through their umbilicus into their stomach. Really? So when they hatch they've got an inbuilt food supply already in their stomach and then we want to see actually a weight loss for the first um, week or so, which is that yolk being absorbed, that food being absorbed by them. From the brood room they come out to the outside run, so that's once they're past their hatch weight and are eating well all by themselves. And they remain in these runs until they reach their release weight, which is between 800 grams and a kilogram, just depending on where they're getting released to. And why, why is that weight so critical for them? Um, well that's when they're meant to be more stoke proof, I guess is the term, when they're meant to be able to fend for themselves against introduced predators. You can see the Kiwis have whiskers, which are quite like yeah. cat's whiskers. Um, it's quite wiggly. It's got eyes and those are his ears just behind his eye. And the reason that Kiwi that the Kiwi has whiskers is, is because he, he's a nocturnal bird but he doesn't have large eyes, which other nocturnal birds have, he relies on touch and a sense of smell. Uh, this is Kenobi. He had a stool taken yesterday and came back uh, positive for coccidia, which is a gut protozoa, and we're going to dose him. In 2007, Kiwi Encounter here in Rotorua hatched its 500th BNZ Operation Nest Egg Chick, so they're doing a great job. So he's all done and we're going to pop him back in this little bow. Cool. Back to none ice. Being here at Kiwi Encounter in Rotorua's Rainbow Springs, I've been blown away by the care and attention these doting foster parents provide to our Kiwi chicks to give them their best shot in the real world.